Here's how carrying a self-defense weapon can get you killed. First, it can be used against you. Okay, sure. Personally, I've never seen or heard of anyone drawing a weapon and it being used against them. But can it happen? Has it happened? Sure, yeah. I, I can see maybe how an inexperienced individual carrying, let's say, for example, a firearm for their own protection could possibly get their weapon taken away from them and used against them. But I would argue there are steps that we should be taking to prevent or lessen the chance of this from happening. For example, training. If you're choosing to carry a firearm as your tool of protection, you should be practicing drills that teach you how to draw from an uncomfortable position. Things like knowing how to draw your weapon from an up-close situation are important because your lack of training may be the reason why you and the attacker are fighting for your weapon. So there's this drill that I like to practice in case I ever need to draw from a close retention position. First thing I wanna do is create some sort of distance. So I use my left hand to push back, creating that distance between me and the target. As soon as the distance is created, my left hand is coming back immediately. And I am then with my right hand, lifting up my shirt and drawing my weapon and firing from the hip and moving that line of fire upwards. As all this is happening, I am also stepping back, creating even more distance to prevent the threat from getting a hold of me or my weapon. And when my gun is fully extended, I will then get my left hand to create that firm grip and continue firing until the threat is fully stopped. Okay, but let's say when creating that distance, the threat grabs onto you. So in order to break that hold, you have to lay shots on target so they can feel pain and let go. So the main goal here is to get your weapon out and fire from the hip till they let go. Now, the difference here though is when you draw your weapon and start firing is where you're going to be aiming. You want to aim below the stomach towards the pelvis to prevent you, know, you from shooting yourself because remember, He's still holding on to you. So once you have a couple of shots and they let go, you then can step back, creating that distance and get a firm grip and continue firing until the threat is stopped. But remember, for someone to come up and take your weapon and use it against you, they first have to get up close. And this can be prevented simply by just being aware of your surroundings. If you're in an open environment, looking out for people and not mindlessly scrolling like an NPC or wearing headphones or earbuds out in public. And look, I understand. I'm the person you see at a supermarket with AirPods, but I have a rule when it comes to that. One earbud in and no more than half volume. I pick a playlist and I go in. And look, it's not about being paranoid or anything, but you want to be able to hear your surroundings. And most important, you want to make sure whoever's around you is not getting too close and invading in your personal space for no reason. Second, things like pepper spray have a 90% of chance of backfiring, which weakens your ability to counter an attack. Look, I own some pepper spray and honestly, I don't ever see myself using it. If my life was truly in danger, meaning whatever I do next will determine whether I get to see my family again, I am not using a tool where an attacker may not be phased by some spray or a shock from a taser. I am using the most powerful and convenient tool I can to protect myself with, which I believe is a handgun loaded with hollow points. I don't agree with people who say things like, oh, why do you need a gun? Just get a non-lethal weapon to defend yourself. Look, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're not stopping someone who is under the influence of a hard substance with a non-lethal weapon. I don't care what it is. They're just not going to feel it. So sometimes you do need that extra kick, which is lethal force. And I don't believe you're a bad person or a criminal for choosing a tool that is capable of that. Of course, if used in the right circumstance, meaning your life was in danger of seriously bodily harm or death. Third, it takes three seconds for an attack to happen, but it takes you much longer to take out a weapon. Look, we have to accept that an attacker will always have the upper hand. They decide the time and place. All we can do at that moment is identify the threat and react. Our response time in drawing our weapon will be a reflection on how much time we spent training and practicing with the tools that we carry. That's why I gotta thank the team at Shooters Global for sending me their training shot timer. Today I'll be testing it and finding out how long it takes me to identify a threat and put my first shot on target. So as you see from the video, you are more than capable of drawing your weapon under three seconds if you train and practice. Taking some time out of your day with an unloaded firearm of course, and practicing the simple movements, lift, draw, aim, shoot, lift, draw, aim, shoot, and look, 
You may be thinking, yo, this is boring. I already know how to do this. I've done it a thousand times. I'm good. But you have to think about it like this. A UFC fighter or a sports athlete, when they're not fighting or playing, what do you think they're doing? They're training. Because though they already know how to play the sport or fight, they want to maintain and improve their skills. So their body and mind is ready for whenever their next fight or game is. And look, they have an advantage. Most of the time, they already know whenever their next fight or game is. We don't. So whatever muscle memory and skill we manage to build up over that time, that's all we're going to have if we ever need to defend ourselves. You don't want to be that guy that got their weapon taken away from them and used against them because they didn't know how to create that distance and properly and safely draw their weapon. Or the person that wasn't fast enough to draw their weapon on time because they don't spend any time practicing their draw. Guys, this is not going to happen overnight. We have to consistently be training with the tools we're carrying to be as efficient and accurate as possible. Things like a shot timer are a great way to be recording your progress. If you guys are interested in getting the Shooters Global Timer that I used in today's video, I'll leave a link down below in the description and you guys can check them out and you guys can use code SHATTER15 to get a 15% discount. Also guys, if you're interested in seeing the different drills in how I train or you want to get in contact with me, you can add me on my Instagram at SHATTERTHEWICKED. But yeah, other than that guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have any feedback or you want to add anything to the video, you can leave a comment. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking and subscribing. Hope you guys have a good one. Take care, guys, and God bless.